So another thing I want to discuss, um, just so we are all on the same page, uh, there's a lot of controversy out there about whether or not a high metabolism is really beneficial. Isn't it going to age us more quickly? I've heard that calorie restriction and cutting calories uh, increases our longevity and so forth. Um, all these kind of myths really need to be addressed and we really need to make sure that we all understand what does promote longevity what does promote better and healthier aging uh, and what doesn't so they've done calorie restriction and that starts at birth so calorie restriction starts early on so during the developmental stage you have less growth so the body comes up being smaller there's less muscle mass you have a lower height uh, developmentally you your growth is stunted so that you're smaller and what ends you know what comes of that generally speaking is that you have a smaller body and you're more like a small dog so we have big dogs and we have small dogs a big dog does it have a higher metabolism than a small dog or a lower metabolism well if you define metabolism as the number of calories eaten per day well the big dog needs to eat lots more food than the small dog does that mean it has a higher metabolic rate hell no I mean the small dog has this extreme metabolic intensity it has a very high pulse rate it has a lot of energy <laughs> and it metabolizes a lot more calories per pound per ounce of lean body mass than a large dog so who has the highest metabolism the one that eats the most calories or the one that burns the most calories per pound well the highest metabolism in terms of how I define it I define metabolic rate as per pound adjusted for per pound per unit of body mass so increasing your body mass by gaining muscle mass you hear all these people in the diet industry gain a pound of muscle because it raises your metabolism well you don't really know if it's really going to raise your metabolism or not if it just makes you need to eat more food that's not really raising your metabolism if you gain 30 pounds and now you can eat more food without getting fat that doesn't mean that your metabolism is necessarily higher the best indicator for me I believe is the body temperature now the body temperature is very revealing because it's really revealing the amount of heat that your body is producing per cell I mean really if your body temperature is high that's systemic that's each one of your cells your metabolism is increased because you can certainly gain a hundred pounds have a loss of body temperature and yes uh, you know maybe you were five years old and you weighed fifty pounds and now you're an adult and you weigh 200 uh, but your body temperature may have dropped during that time so your metabolism's actually dropped even though you may be eating twice as many calories as you did when you were five years old so calorie restriction works generally on the same level you can still have a pretty high metabolic intensity level with calorie restriction that happens at birth again the key is at birth because once you've gone through the process of, of development and let's say your body is much bigger than it would have been if you would have been calorie restricted at birth you can't then start to calorie restrict because if you start to calorie restrict then then you see a huge huge increase at your of your rate of aging every calorie restriction study done with real live human beings uh, in adulthood has shown a huge increase in all these different facets of aging everything from uh, gray hair starting to develop to lower energy levels, loss of libido, infertility, uh, skin wrinkling and loss of elasticity. I mean all these different biomarkers of aging have all increased when calories have been taken away from a fully developed adult. So again calorie restriction there's a lot of myths out there about what it's going to do but ultimately you want to have a high metabolic intensity per pound you want to be burning a lot of calories per pound of lean body mass and yes the young dogs this I mean the small dogs they live a lot longer sometimes twice as long as the big dogs okay even though they have a much 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 higher metabolic rate so again it's not it's not about just how many calories you eat sumo wrestlers they eat 10,000 calories a day they have an, ex an astronomically high metabolic rate they don't live longer why because their metabolic rate really isn't that high they're tired they're sluggish they don't move around much they don't have a lot of energy and they're not really
producing ATP and energy at the cellular level at the optimal and maximal rate like you see in a little tiny 10 pound dog that's running around and spinning in circles and barking and chewing on your ankle. So that's really what we're after. And you can't just cut calories in adulthood because that does slow everything down. And it starts methodically by lowering your thyroid output. When thyroid output is lowered, then you see a decline in the conversion of pregnenolone, your sort of mother steroid hormone, into things like DHEA, which is, I mean, books could be written about the associations between DHEA and aging and how powerful DHEA is uh, when you can raise those levels as an older person in terms of overturning a lot of factors and facets of aging. Uh, testosterone, pre progesterone, again we talk about some of these basic fundamental hormones. Um, if you can keep those from declining, uh, you're going to see a huge, huge preservation of your, of your youth. You're going to age much more slowly. You're going to maintain a lot of youth and vigor. So again, and your thyroid is the primary controller of that. So anything that you can do to speed up thyroid activity uh, is always going to be a, a huge benefit to you in terms of aging and aging more slowly, living longer, but also aging much better and having much more functionality. So there's just, there's really not a whole lot of room for debate there. Um, it's just that people have this misconception about calories, thinking that if they calorie restrict in adulthood, they will get the same results as a creature whose growth is stunted and they end up being a small dog, which is going to live longer than a big dog. Um, because it has a high rate of metabolic intensity due to its smaller size. And our modern diet being so calorie dense and everything does make us develop much larger bodies, which is of health detriment. And it's not necessarily ideal to be eating a lot of really calorie dense foods. But once you've built a body, a large body on all these calorie dense foods, you can't then turn and go back to uh, some of these lower calorie density foods. You can't go from cheeseburgers and milkshakes to salads and expect your health to improve. It doesn't work that way. Your health is going to probably get worse and especially if you continue a, a, you know, one of those health food diets for too long because the calorie density is low, you don't eat as much food, your metabolism falls and I think all these, uh, that's one of the commonalities between people who've gone low fat, high fat, low carb, paleo, whole foods, granola, vegan, uh, the one common theme is that you know any incorporation of all these uh, hardcore health food uh, rituals and regimens uh, really always leads to lower calorie consumption and I know that there is just no way that I can wake up and eat oat groats for breakfast plain and consume the kind of calories naturally that I would consume if I'm eating more calorie dense foods. Now this may sound really uh, I don't know, counterproductive or counterintuitive to some of you, but you know, I've been at this long enough that I really feel like you can't cut your calories and expect not to have a loss of vitality along with that, unless you know it just happens to be spontaneous because your weight set point is lower, which uh, can often happen when you have an increase in thyroid, a decrease in stress hormones from eating throughout the day, avoiding some of the guilt eating and all those different kinds of things. Yes, a lot of people have spontaneously lost weight when they developed a healthier relationship with food, with eating, and they started eating more nutritious foods, maybe overcoming some nutritional deficiencies, maybe uh, they de had deprived themselves of fat for many years and they stopped depriving themselves of fat and boom, their weight set point lowered and they started to lose weight. I've seen all these different types of things happen, um, but it's one of those things where you can't say eating less is good, eating more is bad. It just it just depends on the person. It depends. It's highly individual. But I'm all about eating to appetite of generally healthy foods while relaxing about your diet and making sure to still eat a lot of pleasure foods and things like that. And creating and crafting a diet that's sustainable. If you lose weight, great. If you don't. You don't, but you can't really fight against the weight that your body is trying to set and establish. You can experiment and tweak, but you can't go f too far beyond that. But again, I just wanted to talk about this one simple fundamental. You want to preserve the hormones of youth while the thyroid gland and its degree of activity and intensity basically determines the rate at which those anabolic youthful hormones 
the rate at which they decline. The lower the thyroid, the faster they decline. It happens every time. And again, the stress hormones, which we've been talking about so far in the summary, the stress hormones are really what interferes with that thyroid gland the most, starts breaking down the body tissue and it accelerating your rate of aging. So we have low carb accelerates aging. We have uh, fasting and things like that can accelerate aging. Um, exercise, endurance exercise can definitely accelerate aging. There's a lot of different things. I mean, I could list a hundred different things and I'm, I, you know, I shouldn't, I should get out of the habit of picking on these diets because these are tiny, tiny things that some people are doing, but there's things that people are doing every day with stress, with skipping meals, uh, who knows all the different things that people are doing that increase their rate of stress and that increase their rate of aging because of it. But again, to think that you can slow down your metabolism and age and live longer and age better is just simply not true. That's not what happens with real people in the real world in reality. And calorie restriction, when it's been studied and it, with actual real humans, you restrict their calories, it leads to rebound hyperphagia or overeating and gaining a bunch of weight back in the future. So it's, it just doesn't work. You can't reduce somebody's calories and have it work out long term. The only people who manage to cut their calories back and maintain it are people who develop eating disorders, which is a highly deadly disease that increases your rate of aging, it increases your rate of suicide, and the death rate from eating disorders is astronomical. So again, you just can't really manipulate calories like that and live happily ever after. We know with real human subjects it just doesn't work out that way. So that's it for me on metabolism and aging. Don't think for a second slowing down your metabolism uh, per pound of lean body mass is going to help you age better and longer. Simply not going to happen.